what is happening. In this video, we are going to be going to get the abandoned E36 and bring it back to the garage. Kid for my wings, I need my ace. This life is real, if they pretend. Game on the bench, I get it in, I get it in. E36. Dear God, there's so many nuts that are around it. Inside, it's kind of moldy. Someone stole the wheels. Somebody took the wheels. Yeah, somebody took the wheels, didn't they? And there's literal plants growing up through the bonnet. Up through the engine bay. Mint. I'm not sure how much of this I'm actually going to get on video, but we are going to develop, put wheels on, put a jumper pack, and hope it starts. At least they left the front bumper. What's that noise? It's the birdies. <laughs> this could be a track car at the end of this. No front wheels on it, but she started first go. Okay, and the wheels definitely stopped it from moving. Alright, so that's not for having to jig it. She is the rod. I hang a buff and some bumpers, man. So guys, it is the day after, and I'm gonna give you guys a better look at the 36, and it is rough. <laughs> Don't ask me what I'm going to do with this car, because at this point I really don't know. Um, originally I wanted to restore it and make it good again, and now I'm like, do I turn it into a drift car? Do I get wings and a bonnet, and then even just old second-hand wings and put overs on it, and then turn it into like a, a clean drift car? I don't know, but then it is an alpine white coupe, and I don't know about the rest of the world. But over here they are pretty sought after, so I don't know. I don't know what to do, like the... I think step one, clean it, and then we will assess the damage that the earth trying to reclaim it has done. I want to get started. You want to get started? Yeah. Let's get it.
Okay, so looking at this car now, and it's weird to be this enthusiastic about it, but I am super stoked with how it's just come out. I washed it yesterday, it was still wet. I left, came back today, and it's all dried off now. And wait do you guys see this. So it is far from perfect, but I did not think that we were gonna be left this clean underneath all that dirt and leaves and stuff i thought the strut tires would be completely rotted out and they aren't yeah just super stoked the engine's obviously very very crusty it is misfiring as well and i, I mean there was so much water in with the spark plugs so i'm imagining there's something bad there there's obviously already problems here uh, the only rust that I found really is like down here and behind the headlights starting to rust out where there's Two factory holes there anyway, but they're just starting to get a whole lot bigger and um, This car spent a whole lot of its time as a track car. So The front end one of them is different. One of these bumper sports is different But the chassis legs are both Perfectly straight. I'll see if I can show you guys I'll show you guys from underneath. So walking around the car, there is rust in behind where the wing was down here. Really common place, easy fix. Don't really mind, expected. Um, I doubt that was even from it laying out on the floor. The doors and stuff are actually really, really straight. The quarters, however, as you guys saw from the first clips, are straight, but standard BMW, they are rusty. Now this car's clearly been painted up to this body line a couple of times and then up to in around here a couple of times as well. So the roof as well is all lacquer peel. Obviously this car will need fully painted. Rust where the boot spoiler was ripped off, but the rest of it normally in around here is really, really rusty and under here is really rusty and that's both good. The back's never been hit and for a drift car, that's pretty sick as well. So the interior I haven't cleaned yet. I wiped down the steering wheel just because I didn't want to touch it anymore with the mold on it. But as you see, it is as it was. I have both the fader headrests that make the seats look like the fancy seats when they aren't. I did have two door cards, but they were stolen as well. Um, half the dash is missing, the clock's missing, stuff like that, all the buttons and trims are missing the shifter boot is missing the handbrake boots missing but really it's just door cards and some trim for the dash and the glove box that glove box although it looks like a lot's missing over there it's literally just a glove box comes out as a as a whole so i'm not too worried so i'm going to put it up in the air and show you guys the underneath of it So starting from the front, it has an electric fan off another BMW wired into it. There is a switch on the dash, but it also has the viscous fan. So, and it seems like a good clutch and all in it. So that's good. Now you start to see where it was led on the ground with no wheels on it because everything sort of has this surface rust all over it. Like doing an alignment on this car would not be fun. Did have relatively new coilovers in it when I abandoned it, but I'm not sure just how good they would be now. Hopefully they're still half roads decent. I mean, they weren't good coilovers, but yeah, moving back. This is all just leaves and like dirt and stuff from where it was laid flat on the floor. This car had been undersealed by somebody before, which is a godsend because I really do think that is what saved it. It's like a wax oil. It is also what made all the leaves stick to it, but 
I feel like that is what saved it because you can see anything that wasn't is very, very rusty. So luckily all from sort of here back has been undersailed. There is absolutely no rust up front other than the wings. Uh, they were rotten and I actually pulled them off before I abandoned the car where I abandoned it, but there's no holes underneath the front half. But as we get to the back, you can see where it's already been welded. Um, the pockets in E36 is rot out all the time. And, oh, oh, did I speak too soon? Oh no, that's just where someone has jacked it and bent the floor. Um, yeah, so you can see this car has quite a lot of history. Now this side, this side, there's some stuff going on. It's where someone's welded it and obviously the next bit has either rusted out or been pierced with a jack and then rusted, I don't know. So here is a problem area. Common problems on these cars are where the back arms go in, the trailing arms, where they mount to actually rusts. I'm not sure you guys can see it. I'll get a light, hold on. Okay, this will make it easier. So they rust all around where the trailing arm bolts up and in there, although it's a bit crusty, is solid, which is good. And it's the exact same on the other side. It's still solid, again, dirty, nasty. We'll still need all ground out and yeah, this is like two really rough patches. Moving back further, rear coilover springs. I don't think the adjusters are in. They're still pretty good. There's a welded diff in this small case diff. But if you look, someone's put backing plates on because again, they've clearly cared about the handbrake where the handbrake mounts normally rots out of these and yeah, they've cared about the handbrake because it was a track car. Then we move further back and you can see where I bent the floor trying to jack it up. There was nowhere I could have got the jack under other than here. So I chose here as I figured it'd be the easiest place to beat down. When I got this car, the whole spare wheel well was pushed up into the boot and I beat it all down, but so that's not actually a rust hole. That is just where the thing that holds the spare wheel in has popped out as I was beating it down the first time. And then the gammy exhaust is, yeah, a gammy exhaust. So a lot of positive really considering and a lot of negative. Um, the negative is this car needs a whole lot of parts. So, all things considered, it's not too bad. Like, it's not too bad. It maybe looks really, really bad to you guys, but I was expecting way, way worse. So, now the big question is, what do I do with it? Because, hear me out. I can put wings, a bonnet, a nose cone, headlights, indicators, I have a front bumper and a rear bumper, but then I need a spoiler and tail lights and just, yeah, there's, there is a lot. And then the interior bits, but to buy all that stuff, even like the pattern part wings and things like that, they're not going to fit properly. And trying to get this stuff second hand is next to impossible over here, especially now parts are so, so difficult to get. So. My two choices are go and get some okay wings or whatever second hand that are bubbling already, chop them up, put over fenders over them. The back arches are bad anyway, so I will have to either get the patch panels or cut them and put over fenders on them. I like stock body E36s. I've always liked stock body ones. They look awesome, especially in the Alpine white and stuff. But I'm not sure if you guys have seen item B. He has a white E36 with the HM kit on it and the over fenders and like the high rise spoiler and stuff. And it looks fire. So if I try and make it mint, it's not going to be mint unless I spend a lot of money on it. If I go for fiberglass over fenders and stuff, then I'm not chasing the perfect panel gap that I would be chasing if I went and bought some aftermarket wings and then tried to make them fit. 
they never fit properly and it would be annoying and I don't know. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going to decide. I'm going to make a list of prices for full over fenders and just make like a really clean track car, drift car, road car all at once or price everything up to leave this car back to perfect. Now, it's a 318 IS, so it's only got 150 horsepower, so then if it goes to a track car, we're going to have to put a bigger engine in it. Well, we'll probably keep that engine, blow it up, then we're going to have to put a bigger engine in it. Whereas if it was mint, you'd probably get away with like the 318 IS, it's the E31 with a slower limiter and stuff. I don't know, I don't know. So that is what I'm going to do, I'm going to go away and work it out. So this is probably not a project that I'm going to undertake straight away. Um, I obviously I'm going to have to order a load of parts and they're going to take forever to get here. But I did want to show it to you because it's going to be in the back of the workshop. You guys are going to see it. Everybody's going to know there's something there. I figured I'd give you guys the introduction to the E36 now. Then I'm going to go away, order a load of parts, try and get everything together and then just smash it out in a big long build video series as quickly as possible rather than have an ongoing project over like four months. To give you guys a little bit of context, I bought this car uh, a year ago, then pulled the front end off because it was all damaged, it was bent and twisted and yeah, all superficial, but pulled the front end off, was going to do a project, it sat for a little bit, then I moved out of the garage that I was in, a load of stuff happened, cars got stole, this did have Polish Motorsports on it and a load of parts inside it uh, had M3 mirrors, a spoiler, stuff like that. All of that got stole. Someone robbed the wheels off it. It was, it was, it was a disaster. So that's why I lost heart in the car and let the earth try and take it off me. But we're, we're, we're good. We're getting there. Thank God the other Vader headrest at least that I gave like three, 300 pound for the pair, I think. And it was in the house, so they obviously saw one, didn't take it, thank God. So yeah, that's just a brief overview of why I let an E36 turn to this. Because that wouldn't be the normal car guy thing, but I was depressed. I was sad about it. And we're going to get on to bigger and better things with it. You know, every cloud as a silver lining. If I'd had all the clean stuff for it, then maybe I wouldn't turn it into the track car slash street drift car thing that it is inevitably going to be. So, yeah. I'm going to work out what I'm going to do with this car because I don't know. But there is, it's going to, I'm going to take it to the track, whether it's going to be a fully pledged track car or whether it's just going to be a really clean E36. <laughs> And I'm going to take it to the track anyway. Something's going to happen. So, yeah, this is the introduction video to the E36. Hope you guys like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What you think I should do. And try and help me work it out. And like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.